do believe that you are entering a next season, a new season. You're stepping into it. Now, some of these keys that I give you will be reminders. There'll be things that you know you should be doing already, but there'll be encouragements to cause you to take hold of what God has for you. And a few of these things that I mentioned may be things that you've never considered before. But as we move through these various different keys, I want you to commit to applying these biblical truths to your life. And as you do, you'll notice that a friendship with the Holy Spirit becomes cultivated. If you're ready for this, write in the comment section right now, draw me closer. Let that be your public prayer. Type it in faith, draw me closer. Type it in the comment section right now. Let's take a look at number one, commit to daily Bible reading. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 say this, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. The Word of God is Holy Spirit breathed. The Holy Spirit inspired people to write the scriptures. So as you begin to know the word of God, you begin to cultivate and strengthen that friendship with the Holy Spirit because every word was inspired by him. You can ask the Holy Spirit to teach you as you go through the word, but you have to make a commitment to become a Bible reader. Now, this may be something that you're already doing, or this may be something that you know you should do But maybe you've had false starts, or maybe there have been inconsistencies in your commitment to daily scripture reading. It's important that you implement this spiritual discipline because the Word of God is the foundation upon which we build that friendship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Word of God is the substance with which the Holy Spirit creates the character of Christ in you. If you're serious about drawing closer to the Holy Spirit, you're going to get serious about the Word of God. If you're serious about hearing the Holy Spirit, you'll get serious about the Word of God. And this can be challenging sometimes because in our lives there are many different distractions. After all, the flesh craves entertainment. The flesh always craves something else or what's next. And because of that, we have to learn to subject the flesh, say no to the flesh, and instead stay focused on the things of God. Even now, Maybe your flesh is desiring to click on something that you may deem as more entertaining, but not necessarily edifying. Maybe now you're being distracted by some responsibility or some worry that isn't necessary to address right at this moment. So I want you to say no to the flesh and yes to the spirit. Start today and determine within your heart that you're going to make a commitment to receiving from that which is God-breathed, that which is spirit-inspired. This is more than just the scripture of the day. This is more than just reading a post on Instagram or Facebook or on other social media platforms. This has to do with a daily devotion to truly giving yourself over to the word, not just a superficial commitment to the word of God, but a commitment to the word of God that brings forth depth to truly understand the riches found in scripture, to understand the Bible from start to finish, to not skip around And just read little bits here and there and say, well, this is what this means to me. And that's what that means to me for this season. But rather to really dig into the scripture and say to yourself, to ask yourself, what is the Holy Spirit speaking through this verse? What were his intentions when he inspired people to write these particular words? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves as we read the word. And as we do this, We lean more on what the Holy Spirit actually said as opposed to what we want him to have said. Because sometimes we come to the Word of God with preconceived notions, things that we want to believe or things that we've been told. Or maybe we hear things repeated even in church over and over and over again. And because of that, we try to take that framework or that perspective and then force it onto the Scripture. But that's not the approach we should take. Rather, we should come to the Scripture and say, What was the Holy Spirit communicating and how does it apply to me today? But you have to make that commitment to become a daily Bible reader. If you don't know where to start, start with a book as simple as the book of John or the book of James. In fact, the book of James is where I began my journey of 
scripture reading and devotion to the Word as a born-again believer, as a new convert. That was the first book that I read. first book that I approached was the book of James. And in the book of James chapter 1, there's this promise for wisdom to those who ask wisdom from God. So I asked the Holy Spirit, please give me wisdom and show me what the scriptures mean. Help me to understand what it is that you're trying to communicate. And so you can speak to the Holy Spirit, of course, anytime, anywhere, and the Holy Spirit can speak to you. But the clearest way that the Holy Spirit will speak to you is through his words. Number one, you have to make a commitment to daily Bible reading. Start somewhere. And you may say, well, how many chapters do I have to read? How many books do I have to read a day? Just read until the Holy Spirit speaks something through it. And then your commitment can grow. Of course, if you're already further along and you've been committed to the Word of God, obviously you want to increase your capacity and you want to add more and more volume of the Word of God to your day every day. But if you're just starting, start simply and just ask God to speak to you on a daily basis. Receive something from the Word. Make that connection And then, of course, begin to develop upon that. Number two, you have to make a schedule that involves daily prayer. You're going into this new season and you're saying, okay, I want I want to become I want to become someone who's more like Christ. I want to get more serious about my walk with the Lord. I want to draw closer to the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to make a schedule that involves daily prayer. Now, again, at the top of this message, I met I mentioned that there would be some here, some keys that I give to you that maybe you've already thought of before. Maybe you already know that you should do these things, but these will serve as encouraging as encouraging reminders that you ought to commit to these spiritual disciplines. And in a moment, I may say a few that perhaps you haven't heard before, but this is an important reminder that you make a schedule that involves daily prayer. There's an old saying, and it's very true. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you just wake up each day with no intention, with no direction, with no structure, with no organization, you can't expect to just scramble and put everything together last minute. There has to be some degree of structure and discipline that's implemented in your everyday life. Now, as it pertains to prayer, the Holy Spirit will give you the desire to pray, but it's up to you to implement the discipline to pray. And you implement the discipline to pray when you choose to decide to pray. So the Holy Spirit gives you the desire, the discipline, and the decision is on you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16-18 through says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now here in verse 17, what's being communicated is the simple idea that prayer should be a lifestyle. And this, of course, involves both spontaneous prayer and scheduled prayer. You can pray all throughout your day, but also make sure that you're carving out sections of the day wherein you are totally focused on God, not distracted by anything, not doing anything else. Again, it's okay to pray while you work or pray while you drive or pray when you're amongst friends internally, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, constantly being aware of His presence. But you must also add to that spontaneous prayer throughout the day, a scheduled prayer in which there are no distractions and it's just you and the Lord. When we go a day without prayer, we're saying to the Holy Spirit, I can go today without you. When we go a week without prayer, we're saying to the Holy Spirit, I don't need you this week. When we go a lifestyle without prayer, we're saying to the Holy Spirit, I can live in my own strength and power and ability. Prayer is the involvement of the Holy Spirit. Prayer is how we involve the Holy Spirit in our daily activities. Prayer is how we commune with Him consistently. Prayer is how we get the mind of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for everyday use. You have to make that schedule. And if your schedule doesn't allow for prayer, rework everything else. Begin to make some prioritization there. Make a list of things in order. What deserves your time as the highest priority? Make that list. Go from there. Get practical with the way you do You know, everything that is spiritual is a partnership with God. And when I say partnership with God, I don't mean that God needs us. But I mean that God has made it so that movement is required on our part. 
God will save us. That's his work. He does it. All he asks is that we believe on his son, Jesus. God connects with us. All he asks is that we have faith. The Lord does miracles. All he asks is that we believe. So there is some simple act to be done on your part. For example, the spiritual gifts. There's another example. God will heal the sick, but you've got to go lay hands on them in faith. God may have given you a gift of prophecy. So in order for you to prophesy, you have to choose to respond to what you believe the Holy Spirit is speaking and then open your mouth and speak. Everything that we do that is spiritual requires our participation and prayer is no different. So if we are to see prayer become a part of our everyday lives, we have to get practical with it too. And those practical structures, that practical implementation is actually what ends up helping us to develop a very deep spiritual connection with the Holy Spirit. So you may be saying, well, what do I do then? And it's quite simple. In order to pray more, you have to choose to pray more. In order to pray consistently, you have to choose to pray consistently. It comes down to choice. Again, the Holy Spirit gives you the desire. You must make the decision and implement the discipline. So that is make a schedule that involves daily prayer. Going into this next season, you need to sit down. Yes, you need to look at your calendar. Yes, you need to write the vision down, make it plain. You need to get practical. Even in the book of Acts, they were very practical with the way that they implemented ministry. Even Jesus would pray in the morning. Jesus would go away in the evenings. Jesus would isolate himself so that he could spend time alone with God. Even looking at the lifestyle of Jesus, we see that there were practical implementations that ultimately helped him to carry out those disciplines of the Spirit. So number one, commit to daily Bible reading. Number two, make a schedule that involves daily prayer. So those two, of course, we know we ought to be doing, and I pray that that served as an encouragement for you, a reminder that you should make the decision to implement these for the next season. Number three, and this may be something you haven't thought of, and that is start saying no to more. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5, the Bible says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So you can either live in planning and wisdom, or you can live in foolishness and haste. You know, typically, and there are some exceptions to this, so I'm not making a sweeping generalization, but for the most part, if you have to hurry and worry, because you didn't plan properly. If you have to hurry and worry, it's because you're carrying things that maybe you shouldn't be carrying. Ephesians 5, 15 through 16, the Bible says this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16, very key, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So how do you maximize, optimize opportunity? You do so by saying no to that which is not for you. There are many good things, but not every good thing is a God thing. Pastors, preachers, real briefly, I'll directly address you specifically. You don't have to say yes to every preaching engagement. In fact, you should probably be spirit-led. Now, not probably. You should be spirit-led on what you accept as a ministry invitation. You should be spirit-led on which live streams you say yes to on which interviews you say yes to. Now, I'm just going to be very transparent with you. This is something that the Holy Spirit has had to help me work through because sometimes we can develop this Superman complex, right, where we think it's our responsibility to do everything, and there's some ego involved in that kind of thinking. But when you recognize that God has given you an assignment, God has given you specific tasks, God has given you responsibilities in the areas of certain family members, certain friends, certain connections, then you can begin to say no to that which is not of God. If you have trouble saying no, you're going to have a major distraction in your life eventually that will cause that fellowship with the Holy Spirit to be disrupted. Now, let me say this carefully. I'll go off on a bit of a tangent, but I think it's necessary to explain this. The Holy Spirit does not leave the born-again believer. And we don't earn the Holy Spirit by the level of holiness in which we're walk walking. In fact, we can't even be holy without the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit doesn't leave the born-again believer. The Holy Spirit grieves within the born-again believer when they're walking in disobedience. This is why I say that disobedient Christians are probably the most miserable group I know. 
because of that conviction that becomes overwhelmingly intense and they can't even focus on anything else. So I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit leaves you or abandons you when you make a mistake. I'm saying that your focus on that fellowship, your ability to receive from that fellowship, your ability to hear his voice can often become negatively affected when your life is filled with distractions. You don't have to say yes to every invite. You don't have to say yes to every favor. You don't have to say yes to every obligation. You don't have to say yes to every project. You don't have to say yes to every hangout. Every time somebody goes to fellowship and some Christians have the fear of missing out. It's called uh, FOMO is what they have. And they think that if they miss that one outing or that one thing, that it's just going to be the end of the world for them. And in fact, many are in financial uh, stress because of that kind of thinking. But when you begin to say no to what is not of God for you, then you begin to become focused. In order to become dynamic, you must first become specific. Trust that he's with you. In fact, write it in the comment section right now. He's with me. Type that out. Say it by faith. Even if you don't believe it completely, even if your feelings tell you otherwise, even if your circumstances seem to indicate something else, I want you to write something like that. He's with me or he abides in me or the Holy Spirit lives in me. Write whatever it is, a declaration of faith that indicates that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. You have to trust that he's with you. Tell him, I trust you, Holy Spirit. You have to trust that he's with you. So often we imagine that when we make a mistake, the Holy Spirit panics and flutters away. But that's not the case at all. Remember, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave the believer. The Holy Spirit grieves within a believer. Are there consequences to sin? You bet. Are there consequences to sin even for the believer? Absolutely. Sin is a destructive force. But the Holy Spirit isn't going to abandon you just because you made some mistakes. He's going to abide with you so that he can help you get it right. Is this sloppy grace? By no means. Because the Holy Spirit abides with you, You've been given the power to live holy. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling, empowering presence of the Holy Spirit, enabling you to walk in holiness. Why would God remove from you your only chance of being holy as a punishment for you not being holy? It doesn't make any sense. So Romans 8, 14 through 17. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit. We are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. So the Bible very clearly here says that the Holy Spirit causes us to cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit testifies with our spirit. What a beautiful truth. Thank you, Jesus, for this. The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Think about that. When your emotions say... God has rejected you. Holy Spirit takes issue with that. And he says, I have not rejected you. When your circumstances indicate that perhaps God abandoned you, the Holy Spirit reassures you that he's never left. When everything in you is questioning whether or not you still belong to God, the Holy Spirit assures you that you belong to God. God as an adopted child. You're a co-heir with Christ. So sometimes we feel distant from God. We feel rejected by God. We feel like we've been put out of the family. We feel like we've been cut off. But we go by faith, not by feelings. We go by the truth of the Word of God and the confirmation and the witness of the Holy Spirit. So as you enter this next season to be drawn closer to the Holy Spirit, and of course, when I say drawn closer, I'm using that in, as a turn of phrase. I'm, I don't really mean that the Holy Spirit comes closer or goes further. 
I mean that his influence is increased in our life or our awareness of and appreciation for his presence is increased in our lives. But if you want to walk in that awareness, you want to walk in that closeness, you want to experience what it is to live out of, you want to learn what it is to live from that connection with the Holy Spirit, well, you're going to have to begin to implement these spiritual practices because they're based on the Word of God. As you trust that He's with you, look at maybe you've been abandoned by people. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe your whole life has just been a series of rejections and a series of abandonments and a series of heartaches. And it's very difficult for you to trust people. And maybe somewhere deep down in the back of your mind, deep within your heart, you believe that there's just something so broken in you that nobody wants you around, that nobody likes when you're near, that nobody wants to accept you. Maybe you believe something like that. Well, the Holy Spirit speaks against that lie. And the Holy Spirit confirms within you, I have not abandoned you. I do want you. I've not rejected you. You are mine. And you have to choose to believe that. Even when you don't feel it, you have to choose to believe it. By him we cry, Abba, Father. Father, I pray you would help your people to implement these spiritual disciplines. Cause them to remember these things, Holy Spirit. They might cultivate a friendship with you and walk more closely with you than ever before. Thank you for your abiding presence. And Lord, I pray for healing and deliverance to take place even now. Father, I speak healing to their bodies, deliverance to their minds, like every addiction. Now receive a fresh touch of his power right now. Come on. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you that your power is present. And I thank you that you're filling in afresh. Refreshing is coming upon for this next season. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Hey, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this teaching so that others can be blessed by it. You know, when you leave a like, it spreads the video even further. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, you'll get teachings on the Holy Spirit, prayer, spiritual warfare. So make sure you subscribe. And also click that notification bell when you do subscribe.